Do you struggle to get your needle felted arms, legs and ears the same size and shape as each other? Well I've got 5 tips on needle felting symmetrically to help you get everything looking great every time like this Pikachu and later in the video I'll show you how you can check if your felted item is symmetrical and fix all of this little guy's problems. So to start with I'm going to bust a myth that is accidentally spread by most of the needle felting tutorials you'll see on YouTube including mine. Most tutorials start by showing someone grabbing some wool and after a lot of stabbing they've felted a Pikachu or a rabbit or some other character but I'm gonna let you into a secret. My best needle felted characters are created when I have an image to refer to so I always draw the character first. What's that bunny? You can't draw. Don't worry you might not be the next Picasso but then neither am I and if you really don't want to draw then print out an image the size you want your needle felted item to be but if you do draw it remember it's of your eyes only. Once you've finished it can go in the recycling so please try not to worry about how it looks. When I needle felted Pika no I didn't have anything to compare his arms or ears to so he's turned out a bit well a bit unique. Oh yes by the way I've decided to call him Pika no because when I look at him I just think no. So first mark on the paper the size you want it to be. So here I've decided it's going to be 7 centimeters or 2 and 3 quarter inches tall and 4 centimeters or 1 and 5 eighths of an inch at the widest part of his body. So now I'm going to roughly draw the shape of the figure. Remember it doesn't have to look amazing. Having an image will help you keep your final item to this size. I'll go over how to get the perfect placement of the eyes and facial markings in a moment. But to draw the figure you could use a pair of compasses or anything that's round to help. Then adjust the drawing where the head isn't exactly round but it gives you a nice curve to start with then these can be joined together. It's best to draw or trace the arms, legs and ears separately as well. You can use these as templates to refer to to get things like your arms and ears the right length. Don't forget you'll need to draw some extra fluffy unfelted wool at the top to attach it with. So draw a dotted line where the firmly felted arm or leg ends. Now the secret to needle felting your arms and legs the same size, length and width isn't some magical way of stabbing. It all starts with the preparation of the wool and if you're someone who skips forward through the rolling of the wool in these tutorials then stop! Please don't skip. Hopefully you're still there because it's really important. The secret to getting this right is using all of your senses, not just sight. Let's say you're trying to make two arms the same size and shape. The first thing to do is to prepare the wool for both arms before you start stabbing anything. To do this, pick up the wool and use your sense of touch to feel how dense they are. Screw them up into a ball and hold them in your hands. Concentrate on which feels bigger or more dense than the other. This is especially useful when you're trying to get two eyes or pupils pupils the same size. You'll be surprised how sensitive your fingers are and how much you can tell from doing this and if necessary take a piece of wool from one to the other and even them out. So once you're happy that you've got the same amount of wool for each arm or leg spread out each one in the same size and shape before rolling. So for this arm I'm going to spread it out so that the width is the same as the length of the arm that I'm trying to make. That's including the unfelted section for attaching it. Have a look at the wool and check that the wool is distributed evenly. If there is a dense clump then spread that out to an area that looks thinner otherwise the dense part will be more bulky and make the arm wider. I didn't do either of these things with poor Picano's arms. Look how uneven and wide the felt is that I'm rolling up. Because my wool wasn't spread out evenly this arm varies in width and is far too long. Also I've gone ahead and attached it to the body before making the other arm. But here with Pikachu I've made sure the wool is evenly spread and once it's rolled and felted I have an arm with a nice consistent width. Obviously you need to make sure that you stab the arm evenly all the way around. I have a video that gives you tips on shaping that I'll link in the description below. Next check all your arms or legs against the image and rather than attach each arm or leg as you finish them wait until you've made all your arms and legs. In that way you can check them against each other to see that they're the same length and width. Another way to make sure two ears or small paws are exactly the same size and shape is to cut out and use a template. This is especially useful when making fairly flat ears or small paws as I did for my white bunny. Spread out some wool evenly and stab round this template with your needle to get the shape and fold over the wool into the middle to build up the thickness. Don't forget to leave extra unfelted wool to attach it with. You can fold some of this up to bulk out the middle a bit more. Then peel it off and stab it on the back. If it seems a bit thin you can add a bit more wool. But using the template will make sure that when you make the second ear it'll be the same shape and size as the first and the right size in proportion to the body making your finished item look great. So what can you do to turn this Pokemon into a more symmetrical one similar to this? Well let's see what I can do to help this little guy but first we need to figure out where it's gone wrong. The first trick will really help if you're struggling to see why the head or body of your felted item doesn't look quite right. 
Let's take our peaker now and draw around him. Now measure the widest part and mark the middle and draw a vertical line down the centre of him. This should help you see which parts of the body are too narrow or wide and don't match the other side. You can measure them with a ruler or a piece of paper to measure the width on the right and compare it to the width on the left. If they're the same, that's great. But here you can see the width of the body on the right is more than the width on the left, suggesting maybe the left needs to be built up a bit more. And for the head, you can see that the opposite is true. The right needs building up to make it as wide as the left side. Or if you think it's a wide side that's too wide, then needle felt that side some more to reduce it in width. Now, if you're looking at your item and you think the eyes are in the wrong place or shape, don't worry, you can adjust them. If you need to, you can remove the wool, but make sure you're using a sewing needle or a very thick needle felting needle to tease the wool away and pull it out. I have a video that goes into more detail on how to correct mistakes. I'll put a link in the description below. But to get the placement of the eyes right in the first place, here on Pikachu's face, I'm using a strip of paper to measure on your image the height of the character's head. Then fold a strip of paper and mark the halfway point. And fold it again and mark a quarter and a three quarter point. Hold a strip of paper against the image and notice where the eyes sit in relation to these marks. In this case, the bottom of his eyes is a tiny bit lower than the halfway point. So on your felted head, do the same with another strip of paper. Measure the height of the head and mark the halfway point with a pin. Take a piece of cotton or string and place it around the head of your needle felted item. This will be where the bottom of both eyes will be, a tiny bit below the yellow pin. Then to get them in the right distance horizontally from his nose, place the midpoint on his nose on the drawing and mark on your piece of paper where the middle of the bottom of the eye is going to be. Then keeping your middle halfway mark on the piece of paper in line with the pin, use your needle felted needle to mark the bottom of of the eye onto the head. This will really help you to get both eyes the same distance from the middle. Now you can measure the height of the eyes on your drawing and measure up from those felted marks to needle felt the mark for the top of the eye. Use these guide marks to draw out the shape of the eye with just your needle. This way you'll have a guideline for when you add the wool. You can repeat this process for the rest of the face, the mouth, the red cheeks, all measured from your image using the nose as a reference point in this way. <coughs> to make sure you get the arms level, put a piece of cotton around the body horizontally where you're going to attach them. Then you can use pins as a guide for where the arms will go, or even pin the arms into place. This means you can check that the arms are level before attaching them, unlike poor Picano here. <coughs> you might be so unhappy with your felted item that you're tempted to throw it in the bin. But wait, because I'm going to show you how you can fix him. So you might have thought your arm was the right length, but after attaching it realise that it's too short. This could be because you've left too much wool unfelted and soft. This will make the arm or leg shorter as when you attach it all this wool will felt into the body. So when you're checking your arm against the drawing, make sure that where your felted arm stops being firm is at the same point as the dotted line you drew earlier, as this is the true length of the arm. So to make the arm a bit longer, if it's only a small amount, then you could felt a bit more of the fluffy end firm. And you can use a scarf of wool to wrap round the arm to help attach it if necessary. What if it needs to be much longer than that? Well then you can wrap some more wool overlapping the fuzzy area, not forgetting to leave yourself a new section of unfelted fuzzy bit. Remember, you don't have to get it right first time. Needle felting is constantly adjusting and looking at what you want it to be. So what do you do if an arm or leg, or ear for that matter, is too long? Take a firm hold of the fluffy end, pulling the end apart and tease the wool out so that it's unfelted again. This looks a bit brutal and messy, but it really does work. If it's too felted to do this and you need it to be a lot shorter as it is here, then you can cut some off with scissors. Just make sure that you leave it a tiny bit longer than you need so that you have some loose fibres to attach it with. If you think of wool as a sculpting material and you were sculpted in clay, you just remove some clay if you had too much. So don't worry, you can neaten it up afterwards. If your arm, leg or tail is too narrow or the wrong shape, you can easily wrap more wool round to bulk it out. So to get the rest of Picano looking a bit better, I've added some wool to his floppy tail and some to his ears using a template to help get the shape and size right on both. Then I've marked out his face using the measuring tips I mentioned earlier, giving him a slightly different look. Aww. He still looks sad, but at least he's symmetrical. If you'd like to see some more tips on needle felting, click here. Thanks for watching.